Happy Feral Monday. I have missed y'all so much. Um, we, of course, I was still filming and keeping everything, you know, going in a sense, but I didn't do a story tutorial on Thursday and Friday. So, and then I never do them on Saturdays and Sundays, but we did have family in town and we still do, but I'm excited and I have missed y'all. And today I thought we would do, I have an idea. I don't know if that's where it's going to go, but I want to use this palette because I love these mauve pink tones over here. This is gonna be good. Ooh, is that a black base? <gasps> okay, let's go. And if you're thinking, Rose, your eyebrows look so different. I didn't do anything. The only difference is this high ponytail that Ben helped me with. Um, <laughs> okay, so y'all know I'm usually filming another video as I'm filming this. I just swatched this shade. Okay, ready? It comes to life. That's beautiful. I'm excited. I don't know if I want to use that one today because I do have kind of an idea. I want to do very soft smoke and then I want underneath here to be kind of that under wing. I have ideas. Let's go. So we're going to start our eyeshadow look with clean canvas because I want the, like I mentioned, I want this to just be a really soft, sparkly with just a touch of definition and we're going to let the bottom lash line do the squawking today so we're going to take our concealer brush oh today's the last day for our cyber monday black friday sale so i'm going to get you a link for that okay let's do this so i'm starting over here we're going to grab this shade on an e28 I did three swipes. Let's make sure that we don't have any crease and creasing here is fine because we're not working there. But we're gonna work here in our socket and our upper crease. And I'm just gonna press that. These are so pigmented. Huda's palettes are always so nice. Um, I remember, I forget what the very first one was, but ugh, I still have it and I just loved it. And of course, makeup science gets better every year. And our palettes are always a 10 out of a 10 for me. So I'm just going to continue to build this up. So now let's take some of this shade, two taps, and let's transition with this. We don't want to put that directly on this shade because that could kind of lighten it. So all you have to do, and this is something that we talk about a lot here, but if I'm ever repetitive, please remember that there are new people trying to figure out makeup every single day. And I try to go a little bit more in depth, then back to basics. A little bit more in depth, back to basics. We hop around a lot. But back to what I'm saying, I want to keep this pretty dark. I want it to stay kind of true to where we were, but I do want it to transition lighter towards my brow. That's what gives us that depth. That being said, all I have to do is just be mindful of where I'm picking up that product. See where it is on the brush there? It's more towards the tip of the brush. If I had covered all of this, I would have way too much. So from there, we just remember where it was. And then it's only on a small part of the brush. So we're able to transition, place it exactly where we want it. The shadows don't just become muddy. You still see the definition between the two. Sometimes it's the smallest things. So I have a little bit of my milk makeup. This one, the one that I always use for my shimmers. Clean canvas would be fine for a shimmer, but this very tacky wet base is just going to enhance shimmer like no other. Now, I don't mind if we blur this line later, so this doesn't need to be the most perfect cut crease ever. Um, we'll just get a little bit of definition. You'll notice that it kind of cleans up too. It's a two for one special. Cleaning up and getting a really tacky base ready for our shimmer. So now let's grab, we're using that same brush. I just wiped it off on Sheila. I'm gonna grab our shadow shade and just start at the front. That's pretty. And then I'll just build it up some more. This is looking so soft. This is exactly what I had in mind. And then we'll grab a fluffier brush once I get this lid nice and coated and we'll just ever so lightly blur the edges. You'll see what I mean. Now we're going to grab our E28 again, and all I'm doing is I'm taking the tip of the brush and just kind of softening that line. I didn't want just the most perfect cut crease. I want a little bit of definition, but I definitely want to soften the line just a hair. 
Now I want the focus to be underneath here later once we get the liner on. Well, we can't finish any of that till we get makeup on, foundation, concealer, the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. But what I do want to do is I'm trying to find the shade I want. I think we'll just take this one. And we're going to take that on an E27. And really all I'm doing is just darkening my lashes where they meet almost the softest tight line you've ever seen. I don't want to have any type of liner. I want that to be, there you go, that's gonna be perfect. See how that's just kind of hiding just a little bit of any base that might be in my lashes. I don't wanna extend it. I just wanna do a very, very soft, I guess, tight line, we'll call it that. It's not really a tight line, I don't wanna call it that. So a tight line would be if I went underneath here on my skin and then barely out. So this is more of just a hidden lash line. We did our Libre Lashes. This is style number three. Perfect. And then we have to just put, in case you didn't know, I feel like sometimes I just assume that we're one big family here. And like I mentioned, I, I sometimes, I don't realize that I need to kind of walk through different steps that I don't show all the time. And if I ever skip them, it's because I know who watches this and hangs out with me every day. And I know that y'all probably know that, but we can't be assuming. So I'm not even gonna curl my lashes. All I'm doing is just putting a little bit of mascara on um, before the lash, just so it's as dark as the falsy. So I'm gonna teach you really quickly about waterline. I know that a lot of times it can be tricky. We wear contacts. Y'all, I wear contacts now, okay? That doctor got me. <laughs> But that being said, I know I've seen a lot of makeup artists and it's it, it's a wonderful technique, but it requires tugging. And if we wanna do this every single day, tug, we all know by now tugging on our eye is not a good idea. But taking a C31, we got our slant, just, we don't, I'm not saying you need the C31 for this, but a short, dense brush, okay? And we're pushing, we're just kind of squishing in there, okay? We're not tugging. We're just doing a nice squish, and by doing that, it exposes the waterline. Now, I'm not gonna do this yet because I wanna tell you something else. All right, now let's give this a squish, okay? And what I'm gonna do, just, just, just do it in the center. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here. I'm warming that up. Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna try to do as few passes as possible. This is fine, because this is no big deal. Um, that being said, the fewer passes that you can make, the better, and the reason why, and I think the why is, I feel when we're trying to understand something, me telling you why helps you get it. So when we're going back and forth a bunch, what's that? what that is doing is it's adding moisture and changing the formula of any long wear pencil. So the fewer the passes we can do, the better, because it's gonna set, the liner's gonna set properly, and that's how it's going to last. So too much moisture going back and forth that could be why you don't like your eye pencil and why it's not lasting and why it's running. By the way, this is actually one of my favorite black gel liners in the history of black gel liners. This is exceptional in every single way, the way it glides, the way it wears, how pigmented it is. It's everything we want a gel liner to be. And I wanna go get you a link because I, I try not to be too adamant on certain things like, oh, you need this, oh, you need this. You, you might, you might need this. I really think you'll enjoy this. So update, I did purchase the Kylie concealer, but another update is I've been hitting my retinol so hard that th it's not applying nicely and it's not the concealer's fault, I don't think. <laughs> But I've been doing my intense retinol. I'll go get you a link for that. I know you're gonna wanna know about it. I'm trying to get this off with Sheila really quickly. But that being said, I do like the color. So this, the color that I got is 3C and it's really, really nice. It, it looks a little bit warmer here, but it's nice and cool. It's got some peachiness. It's not too bright. It's not too dark. I really like the color. And I, I think I wanna order 4C. I'm gonna get another one. So I'm gonna keep y'all updated. I'm, I think I might be okay to, what I'm gonna do is my under eyes were stinging from the retinol. Let me just see if, I don't think it's stinging, so I think we'll be good. Don't be scared of retinol. <laughs> so I've been using, I, I just started using it because none of my retinols were kind of doing anything anymore. 
Um, I want you to research retinol. I want you to search it. I am not a skincare professional. I do not want you to use retinol even without talking to a dermatologist. I, I, I don't, I will, be in, I will be in charge of makeup, but when it comes to skin, I'm just gonna tell you what I use. I really, really, really want you to research more about it. Um, I would, it would break my heart for you to get it and have a sensitivity to it, something happen, but I will give you kind of something to research. So I really, really enjoyed this one. And for a couple days after I use it, so I'm getting my skin used to this one because I haven't used this level in a while. So I'm kind of just getting it used to it again. I have used this level before, but it's been a while. So um, I it feels good. I feel like we're good to go. But in case you're gonna ask, which I know y'all are, I just started using this one again. Now, where are my skincare brushes? They have RUN and OFT. Oh, they're over there. Let me go grab them. This is my favorite thing to use. We're, we're still, if I'm gonna use a face oil, it's gonna be this one. Let me go get my brush and I will explain this more because if I'm retinol and I need this or I'm a crudustal. So I have one drop of that oil here on my spot treatment brush from Anissa Beauty and I'm just going to go around my eye a little bit. And then I'm going to put it on areas that are just crusting a little bit from the retinol and say that you just have dry skin because you're living in a drier climate, it's winter, the heat's on. You, I promise you will love this. A lot of you um, have this because I've used it so much and I don't think I've had any complaints. So I'm so glad that y'all like this. I'm so careful with what I suggest because I know that certain things can sabotage makeup. A lot of oils sabotage makeup, but the way that this one just absorbs and kind of lays and works with makeup, it's a 10 out of a 10. Now we are using really thin amounts, so a minute should be enough for it to absorb. We can even kind of just push it in if we need to. Just a little push in there. Now I purchased this myself. This is Cover FX. By the way, they're having a major comeback. Look at the new packaging. I'm already filtering it up, but I'm so excited. I'm, I got the same shade that I wear in the foundation, which is M3. Let's check it out. I feel like this is gonna be really good with the retinol too, because it's a cream foundation. That's me just being over the moon with this perfect foundation. Look at this. I'm trying not to look here. Y'all, I, I am, I'm, I have, this sensitive skin that absolutely flares up. I talk about this a lot. It'll flare, but it'll go away in three minutes. But it looks like I am breaking out into hives, but only for three minutes. I'm okay. I don't want y'all to worry about me. But if you ever see this, don't worry about me. I love how much y'all worry about me. And I love you. I worry about you. So I'm scooping some out here with my spatula. I don't like to just dunk my brush in there. For one thing, I know a lot of makeup artists, maybe starting their makeup journey, working makeup artists, follow me. And I always wanna kind of give the idea of, you know, doing things the pro way, doing it the sanitary way. I don't want you to feel that if you're at home, you don't do anybody's makeup. You could absolutely dip in here. But another reason I will tell you not to is because dipping in there could just, absolutely mess up the way that your brush is going to apply it because you're picking so much up when you go in here like that instead of just kind of evening that out with the spatula or your finger you don't need the spatula but little tips like this make a big difference on how your tools perform and we're only as good as our tools I was saying I learned that years ago and that's part of the reason, well, like it is the main reason why I wanted to do makeup brushes instead of just coming out with, you know, the fun stuff. I didn't want to come out with just a gold eyeshadow palette. I wanted something that could help you improve what you already have. And I just feel that tools are just, they're so overlooked. Our brushes, and how we use them are so overlooked and they're what really bring all of this together. So if you ever wondered why brushes, it's because they just don't get enough love. So my collab here with Mob Beauty, they're having a 25% off sale right now. I feel like it's gonna end today since it's Cyber Monday, but don't quote me on that. But they're definitely having a sale. So 
What I wanna do is I do wanna smoke out this bottom part, but I'm gonna be using a lot of dark shadow under there in just a second. So right now it doesn't look too bad, but we can't be trusting it. So let's grab just a hair of our soft peach. This is a cream clay shadow, but we can use it underneath here. We love multi-purpose. Let me grab a little bit more on the other end. There we go. And then let me find a C31. And now all we're gonna do is I'm gonna try to focus this pretty close to the eye. And this is just gonna help balance darker tones later. I know you're like, why do we need that? When I used to think, why would I need that? And I know I don't have dark circles. I, I, I don't ever want y'all to think that I'm saying that I do. I'm very careful with what I say. Um, because I know that things can be very sensitive to others and I just love y'all so much. But trust me. Now, concealer's still going to go on this. I know y'all are thinking, Lord. But we just need that balance underneath because this is going to help with shadows later. Just make sure it's really nice and even underneath the eye. Now, let's take our Kylie concealer. Okay. My tummy's growling. Don't know why I've eaten everything that you could possibly eat this weekend. Name it, I've probably eaten it. I can't stop, it's delicious. And now let's take our concealer brush and we're gonna go right on top of that. Ooh, yeah, I really like the concealer. It's very brightening. So a long time ago, I don't even remember the year, whenever Kylie first released her concealer, I purchased that concealer and I wasn't on PR. I bought this myself too. I, I actually don't think I'm on PR anymore, which is fine by me. Y'all know I love to buy things and try them. But when she first released this concealer, I used the shade Gypsum as my highlight shade like this. And I used the shade Himalaya as my color corrector. And I loved, I was saying I loved that formula. I feel that that formula was ahead of its time. Now, this is going on perfectly, and it was my retinol like I knew. Um, the retinols had time to heal and not just be absolute chaos on my face at the moment. So this is not patchy. I'm loving the pigment levels of it. It's beautiful. I do want the shade 4C. I want to see what that looks like, too. So I need to go get that. I might go get that after this. They were sold out, or I would have bought it at that Ulta, but I think it might be at the other Ulta. So I'm gonna go get that today. But this is, uh, it's wonderful. I'm gonna brighten up the center just a little bit more, just a little bit. I'm, I'm seeing that I need it even less than that. I'm gonna be okay, but if you wanna try it, use less than I just used. It's very, very pigmented and a little goes a long way. See that? I think I'm impressed. So I'm using P. Louise. This is the blush. Why am I a mess? Why am I a mess? Why am I like this? But the shade I'm using is Red Velvet. I wanted to use something different today. Um, I just think this is gonna be so pretty and kind of match these tones right here. As you can see, I have that one blended. But I'm using a C41, and I'm doing this before any powder, any bronzer, just do this before. And I'm also doing it a little higher just to kind of continue with that lift. I'm not draping because it's barely, barely there. So don't be afraid that we're doing an 80s look, which I love. Some of y'all don't enjoy that as much as I do. <laughs> but that being said, that little bit, just that hair right there is going to add lift and glow. I don't know if I told you the shade I was using, Red Velvet. I'm sorry, I'm getting excited because I'm having fun. I'm so excited we're about to start this. So much fun. But highly recommend this formula. I, I want to mention again that I would see it all over TikTok and I was like, that's really pretty, but I'm just not sure. But it's it's totally worth um, screaming about. It's totally worth it. It's a 10 out of 10. I actually do recommend. Now we're going to use jeans on the move. He's ruckusing and making his little elephant noises. So this is Hazelnut Heart. This one's also from P. Louise. I do feel like a lot of you might not enjoy this. It does come with a sponge tip applicator, but I don't recommend a sponge because it can just kind of take away your makeup. So I don't, I don't love that. So I take it off, but then it does become more complicated. You could just put it right on your finger, put it on. Uh, I like a spatula because I can kind of really thin it out my nails are long. So if you have short nails, it might be easier. Um, but I like, I like my spatula. It's, and like that, it's kind of fun. 
I have done nothing but reach for this Kiko Milano bronzer. I scratched the heck out of it. I don't know if you can go oh, there. It is. This is all I've reached for this weekend. Well, I was, like I said, I still film, but I just didn't do my stories. So I have a lot of fun, helpful videos I need to be posting. But what I'm doing right now is I'm going to set the main, mainly the perimeter of the face. I have no powder on my face, but if you've been struggling with your bronzer kind of changing colors, sometimes even our translucent powders, our most translucent powder can leave a cast, which is gonna change the color of your bronzer. And then a powder foundation or a, a, a powder close to your skin tone to set that cream bronzer that we already had on is certainly going to change it. So if you have a cream bronzer, set it with a powder bronzer. And I know that might be excessive, but Wet n Wild has amazing bronzers for, I don't, I don't even know how much they are, but they're so affordable. So I'm using my one size ultra pink powder. Make sure that's nice and even on my puff. I feel that, now you're gonna see this because it's a very pigmented uh, powder, but I feel that some of us might think that setting with powder and picking it up on a puff is going to pick up so much product, but that is not the case whatsoever. There is not that much powder going underneath my eye right now. Not at all. And I don't want y'all to think that this is baking. All this is is setting, and I'm using the smallest amount, and the puff is basically doing the work by tapping back and forth and just really pressing that into that very wet concealer. For the rest of my face, I'm gonna reach for something that's gonna be closer to my skin tone. So we'll do this one from House Labs, which I really like this one to kind of set the rest of my face. And I'm just gonna work in sections. And I can use a brush here. I don't need it to be quite as focused. Now, if you have oily skin, setting with a puff and really working it in is going to be a really good idea. I have Balance to Dry, and right now I kind of want a lighter setting of powder where the retinol is really going to town. So setting with a brush over a drier patch is always a good idea, especially one that's like this. This is a mess right now. Um, but it's, it's dense, but it's not too dense. So you're able to get that fluff, but see, you can still see that it's nicely set. See that difference? And this one's from the Essential Travel set. Ooh, this looks nice. And I wanna kind of avoid where we put that bronzer. Remember that? Let's avoid that. Now for the good part, let's finish up our eye. And I'm coming from on top. If I come from underneath, I might do too much. Um, I wanna just let you know to come from the top because I want it to be really dark underneath here, but that could mean an array of different things to everyone. So I'm gonna take an E26 and before that sets, we gotta get in here a little quickly and we're just gonna come from underneath and start to build our wing. And let all that smudgy smokiness happen underneath here. And if you have hooded eyes, please try this look. Just try it. Now I did put on more, but like I said, if you come from up top, like I just showed you, we could even do less. I don't want you to think that it's automatically gonna to go to this because sometimes that's too much. I wanna know that, I want to remember everybody's on a different makeup journey. And then you could just do like that, or you could even do less. So say you have a hood right now, I don't have hooded eyes, and the reason why is because I have a facelift with this ponytail. But if we have hooded eyes, because this eye, when I don't have this, is she's, she's creeping, okay? She's doing things that she didn't do a few years ago. Um, but since we're coming from underneath, we're gonna get such a beautiful lift. And I wanna just keep stating that it doesn't have to be this dark underneath here. It could be the tiniest, tiniest line. And you could even do this with eyeshadow, which you would have more control over. Um, but this is a, this is Feral Monday, so we're, we're very smoky. But what I'm saying is coming from underneath, you have so much more of a guideline of where this is going. And it's so much easier to keep it symmetrical because you're not tugging over folds. And I know sometimes we don't always wanna do the uh, bat wing, some different shapes, because this is still a very classic cat eye shape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I just picked up a little bit of the liner, the same one, Just I just kind of rubbed it back and forth here. And let's do a little bit of our penguin beak out this way. This brush makes this extended inner corner so easy. Nice. Now I'm just gonna take a tiny amount of my bronzer 
and just tap back and forth. I'm tapping so I don't fluff any shadow into my eye or bronzer is what I should say. So I don't fluff any bronzer into my eye. Just tap back and forth. So I did my Patrick Ta lip cream. The shade is Seductive. This is probably one of my favorite lip formulas at the moment. Complete, it'll transfer, but it stays, okay? So it'll completely transfer, but it lasts, if that makes sense. And then I'm gonna do this NYX lip liner in Rebel Kind, and I'm gonna really blend it. But I wanted some depth. All right, we're done. This is a fun holiday look. I'm gonna take this right on down to the grocery store. <laughs> I'm excited. I think I wanna have a sandwich for dinner and I can't decide what kind of sandwich, but I'm gonna make that sandwich. I love you all so much. I am back. We are gonna be having fun all week long. Lots of fun stuff, lots of fun ideas. Tomorrow we'll do something, um, usually on Tuesday since I do smoked out wild underwing here. I'll do something a little less wild um, who knows? I might switch it up. Maybe we'll just talk about one specific thing tomorrow. I have some ideas, but I do want you to know that I love you with all of my heart. It feels so good to be back in my makeup room and DMing with all of y'all. And I just love y'all so much. I love you with all of my heart. In case no one has told you today, I love you.